Do you know what a Rube Goldberg machine is? Yeah. You might not know the name, but I bet you know the thing. If, if you overthink things, like I overthink things, a Rube Goldberg machine is your cup of tea. A Rube Goldberg machine does the absolute simplest task in the most complicated fashion. You take a small marble and you push it off a shelf and it falls down and it hits some dominoes and then the dominoes start knocking each other down and then they push a bowling ball down a ramp and that goes down the ramp and goes into the thing and it makes this other thing go up and so on and so forth throughout the entire house until finally a shoe drops and it pushes the toaster down. <laughs> and then a few minutes later, you have your toast. You, do you know the one I'm talking about now? They're brilliant. I absolutely love Rube Goldberg machines. Not just because they, I, they appeal to me because of the overfunctioning and the overthinking, but because they make everything so clear and that everything is so interconnected with everything else. What does a marble have to do with toast? <clears throat> Nothing! <laughs> until it does. <laughs> this machine shows us that everything is really interconnected with everything else. What's happening with one thing inevitably is felt by something else or someone else, even though they might not have anything necessarily to do with the originating action. All things are interconnected between people, between us and our environment, between the created world, between personality types, between generations. You've heard the phrase, the sins of the father are felt by the children afterwards. It's true. What we do now resonates onward down through the generations so that people that we will never meet in person will be affected by the things we do today. What happens to us is felt by others and that's what we read about in the gospel today. We have a slave who uh, owes quite a bit of money to his master, this king. And so this king orders the slave to be sold because of the debt that the slave racked up. But the king also is going to sell into the slaves uh, his wife and his children who had nothing probably to do with the racking up of debt, but they're gonna feel the pain that this one person did, whether they knew about the debt or not, they're gonna feel it. In Psalm 114 that we read today, what happens with the people of Israel is felt in nature itself. We read about the sea and the mountains and the hills all of these things were impacted by what happened to these people. There was an accident on the Golden Years Bridge a few, I guess a month or so ago during the summer. I'm not sure what happened, but traffic was backed up for miles for the better part of the day because one person had an error in judgment in their driving Thousands of people were impacted. The traffic was backed up all the way down River Road, all the way down Lothi. Like, it was kind of gridlocked everywhere. Doctor's appointments were missed. Uh, other kinds of appointments were missed. People were late for work if they even got there at all. One person did one thing, and so many people were affected by it. Yesterday, we had the funeral for Shirley Beatty. Many people in this room probably don't even know her, but we are impacted by her life. Some of the, the um, hangings were made by her. Her husband built the railing, right? So did you know that this was built by someone who used to be a parishioner? Now you know. Someone from a previous generation isn't even here anymore, and yet we feel their impact on our lives. The church was pretty full. And the preacher talked about how Shirley was remembered by the grandchildren and the great grand and the great great, and, and he could have kept going. All of these people have been impacted by the life of, of this one person. 
maybe both she and her husband could be included in that. But the patterns of behavior that they started to build their family are felt by the generations that come after us. People that built this church so long ago impact us today. The generations that brought it across the river and pulled it up the, the street to here, we appreciate the work that they put into the community. We are better people because of the patterns that they started so long ago. Last Sunday in the Gospel, we learned from Jesus how we deal with conflict in communities because it's inevitable. And then this week, we learned why forgiveness is so important. Because conflict is inevitable, forgiveness ought to be inevitable also. Jesus has been teaching us over the past couple of Sundays about the importance of creating a culture in a community. The culture that has a legacy that lives on and on and on. What culture are we creating here with this community that will be felt by the generations that come after us? How will we remember for what we do when it comes to disagreements and conflict, when it comes to the importance of forgiveness? We're setting people up who we may never meet. We're setting them up for success by the culture that we create in this community today. It's a legacy culture. It's not just about the history of the parish. We have lots of documentation about the history of the parish. How do we document our love for one another? How do we document the importance of forgiveness for one another? It's easy to take a photo and create a, a, a container out there with the history and the things that people said and did. We've got things on our wall of generations of people that came past and have come through these walls in these communities. We know them. How do we know that they loved? Do you know the hymn, they'll know we are Christian by our love? Mm -hmm. yeah. By our love, they will know we are Christian by our love. How will people know our love here? How will they know that we took the lessons that Jesus teaches us about working through disagreements and forgiveness? How will they know we did that? How will they know when they walk in the door that this is a place where forgiveness is important? Where we understand that the things we do today impact people we may never meet. How do they know that this is a community that works through our understandings, our misunderstandings, our conflicts, and our resolution? How will they really know that? I think they will know that when they get to know us. I think they will know that when they come in here and they say, oh, that generation back in 2023, they did this thing and we get to benefit from it because they cared so much about one another. This is how we behave when we come in here with the same kind of care and compassion with others. How do we demonstrate Jesus's teachings and these values that have been handed to us? When we build a culture in our community, a culture of what we understand the Christian ideals to be, love, compassion, forgiveness, understanding, mutual support, patience. When we build this culture, it's the, one of the greatest gifts that we can hand down to the generations that come after us. Already, when people walk through the door, I think, and for those of you that are fairly new to the community, you, you <coughs> back me up on this or, or tell me that I'm wrong. But when people come in here, they feel a sense of warmth. Amen. Yeah? yeah? Genuineness. That there's a place for you. Yeah? I'm seeing a lot of head nods. Yeah. That's a great gift. Long time St. John, the Divine members, that is a great gift to give one another for a place where people can be, where they can feel like they're valued and important. Because you value yourselves and treat yourselves as important, you give others permission to do the same things for themselves. And that way we build a stronger community. When you are as generous with your forgiveness as you are with your finances, 
you're giving a gift to others that lasts, creating a legacy culture in our parish. All of the things that we read about in, in the stories in our Bible, all the, <clears throat> the families and the nations and the languages, all of the stories of communities that we learn about in the New Testament documents, it all talks about basically the same thing, building lasting communities that are based on love, mutual support, respect, dignity, and care. If I could boil this book down into just, just one theme, I think I would go with that. When we create our community based on the word of God, let it be that, that we build this community of strength and love and care for one another. And we teach that to the generations that come after us. In that way, they will know that we are Christians by that love. And that is the good news. Amen. Amen.